And then there's Mother Nature. In this documentary with award-winning director Brillante Mendoza and underwater videographer Robert Suntai at the helm, Senator Lauren Lagarda tells us the story of the beauty and the desecration of our country's marine biodiversity and what some environmental groups are doing to save what's left of it. Beneath these blue waters that cradle the islands of the Philippines lies the world's richest marine ecosystem. Vast coral reefs, seagrass beds, and dense mangroves, bursting with color and life line the coasts and depths of its islands. It is nestled in the so-called Coral Triangle, which is home to more than three-quarters of the world's coral species and over 2,000 marine plants and animals. The natural abundance of the seas benefits more than half of the country's 98 million citizens, mostly farmers and fisherfolk living on coastal lands. Our enchanting islands are among the world's top tourist destinations. Their pristine white sand and crystal clear waters attract thousands of tourists each year. Reefs nurture life in the sea. They are natural habitats for thousands of marine species. A square kilometer of healthy coral reef may yield to about 30 tons of fish every year. Reefs are intricately linked to mangrove forests, seagrass beds, and countless other ecosystems. Nature has truly blessed us with rich marine resources, but these natural treasures are not forever bountiful. And the risk of losing them pervades through human abuse neglect, apathy, and inaction. In the past 30 years, our coastal ecosystems have significantly declined. Now, 70% of our mangroves are damaged. 20% of our seagrass are destroyed. Nearly 90% of coral reefs are endangered. Only 1% of these underwater rainforests remain pristine. It would take many years for these corals to form, grow, and flourish anew. And the mass of fish species in our coasts has dwindled to one-tenth since the 1940s. Overfishing, destructive fishing, urbanization, and pollution. All these degrade our marine ecosystems. Unpredictable weather extremes brought about by climate change threaten even more marine biodiversity as they destroy the coral reefs. To destroy coral reefs is to endanger the entire marine life. For us, its destruction affects the livelihood of our coastal communities, our food supply, our tourism, and our economy. We need our seas to live. In the 1970s, dynamite and cyanide fishing were common in Apo Island in Negros Oriental. As coral habitats were destroyed, their fish dwindled, and the community risked losing their very source of food and income. It was a turning point for the people of Apo Island. In 1982, the town adopted a marine conservation program that stopped these unsustainable fishing ways. The intervention there was a small fish sanctuary. At the time, it was about what, six hectares. And um, it was a way of focusing the people to the fact that they should start uh, looking at the sea as a limited resource, not an, an open resource. Our main objective was to help deploy uh, coral modules 
These are artificial structures made of natural dead coral so that you can actually encourage new growth. And these were deployed inside the no-take no -take zone marine sanctuary. The main goal there is first uh, to help provide habitats for the fishes who used to live in living coral. And it's also to stabilize the rubble wherein you are encouraging new growth without being damaged again. Parts of the island were made into a marine sanctuary where locals took turns to guard the coasts from any fishing. Mangrove reforestation, fisheries management, and the establishment of a marine protected area. Vigilance, close monitoring, and intervention from the government and local folks are needed to stop persistent illegal fishing and unregulated shipping. The fishermen itself, para mga bantay dagat lahat eh. While they go fishing, they are also watching their resources, their uh, territory, that no other fishermen or illegal fishermen that will fish and destroy the, their resources. After three years, the sanctuary and its neighboring area steadily produced more fish. Sa umpisa, parang hindi pa masyadong na-influence yung mga tao. Importante na mag-patrol kayo. Kasi para makita ng mga tao, gusto mong ipakita yung benefits, yung benepisyo ng mga tao. And then this kind of program, it takes time to get the benefits. Huh? Five years, seven years. Through discipline and cooperation in the community, the marine ecosystem fully recovered after 10 years. The long and difficult path to recovery has taught the people of Apo Island to favor and apply more sustainable ways of fishing. I think Apo Island has become a model for marine um, research, not only in the Philippines but also around the world. I think we are very proud of that and we are continually trying to get more information so that we can improve the management of our fisheries through marine reserves. This means that, you know, even if a part of Apo has been damaged, especially the historical marine sanctuary where everything started in conservation for, of the marine resources in the Philippines, there's still hope. They now embrace the much needed balance in harnessing marine resources and protecting the ecosystems. Similarly, many other coastal communities across the Philippines face the daunting challenge of sustaining their marine resources amid the demands of a modern society and the risk spawned by urbanization and industrialization. We can only become worthy stewards of these natural treasures if we uphold and follow the environmental laws to protect our seas and act now to save our marine ecosystems from its current decline. Nature's inherent capacity for giving life always inspires and brings hope. We too can inspire to nurture life in our seas. Save our marine life now and sustain our children's life today and tomorrow. Oh,